right, let's see how to out of practice I am. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the Stitches and Prayers podcast. My name is Pam and I'll be your host today. Yeah, crickets because I've been gone for a while. Um, no good reason. Just the fact that I was having a little pity party. Yeah, pity party. Um, I was going to do Vlogvember. I had plans and I had video ideas and then I don't I don't know, just life got in the way or I was throwing my little pity party because Five people watched it in the first episode, and so much work went into doing it, so much work with videoing it and all of that, but then also the, the planning on doing it, and nobody watched it, and I threw a little pity party for two months, but I'm making myself come back because I love you guys, and I want to share my stuff with you. Um... So during Vlogmas and into uh, Christmas, what I worked on was a lot of stuff for the people that I work with. So we're going to get into that in finished objects. I don't have all of them, but I made um, snowflakes and star ornaments for the people that I work with and put them in little Christmas cards. Um, I made 150 of these snowflakes and just hung them on some twine that I bought at the dollar store. Um, I will, I've made a um, bundle on Ravelry. I'll see what I can do about linking that in the video so that you can go see it. And I've put all of the patterns that I'm going to talk about today in that so you can see the ones that I'm talking about. It will be, um, the name of the pod, the video will be the day that this releases. So hopefully, I'm recording on February 2nd. Hopefully, the bundle will be called February 2nd Podcast. So, the 150, the snowflakes... And then I made 75 stars. Not all the stars were white. Actually, most of them were not white. Um, I had some heavier of the cotton um, thread, but the, like size 10 crochet thread. And it was in a yellow, a golden yellow. And so I made the stars out of that. This was also a free pattern. I will link it in the Ravelry bundle. I know not everybody has access to Ravelry, so I will also try to put it um, in the thing below. Also, for people at work, um, mostly my managers, my like, bosses, the, I made some, I made like one watch cap, which is, I don't have it anymore, but it's the um, Pearl Soho watch cap. It's a free pattern on Pearl Soho. Also, a regular guy beanie. I made like two or three of those for some of the, the male managers. Then for the women, I made some fingerless mitts. This pair I made for me, but the rest of them are, were different colors, but basically the same. This one I am going to take, and this is, the I made the hands too long. I'm going to take, and they get in the way of doing things. So I'm going to take in, um, take out one or two rows, so take them back just a tiny bit. And then I didn't do anything on the thumb, and I am going to add one or two rows to the thumb. But these are Fire Pit Mitts by Taylor Earl who is the dyer behind Fiber for the People. She also has a podcast, um, Wool, Wool Needles Hands, something like that. I think that's it, Wool Needles Hands. 
And these are hers. They come in two different sizes. Like you can make the arm part longer or the arm part shorter. I kind of just knit until I wanted, until the desired length I wanted. And went from there. Um, I made these in uh, some gifted yarn to me. It, you can tell how old it is because the clearance price was $1.97. I don't know where it came from, but it's, um, I don't know what it's called. It's TLC Amore. It's an acrylic yarn. Oh, it's by Red Heart. But it's like this. You see, it's got like a, it's almost like a boucle look. Before boucle was boucle. Um, but I held it double with some of the Karen Latte Cakes. So it has that fuzzy, and they're very, very warm. So that is what I made for a lot of my managers. And that was about it that I made before Christmas. Oh, excuse me. Um, One of, I don't usually make like resolutions of any type for Christmas or for New Year's or anything like that. But what I have decided to do this year is to be more mindful on um, keeping notes of my projects. And that's either going to be on Ravelry. But then I know a lot of, but then I want, I'm a, I'm a pen and paper kind of gal. So I found this cute little notebook. Forget where I got it at. I'm trying to think. Pottery Barn. Pottery Barn. But I love little giraffe. He's so cute. Or she's so cute. And it's just, you know, plain plain lined paper and then I'm going to keep track of my nose is really itching um you know just the things that I'm making so the first thing I've cast on on Christmas Eve, Christmas night was a it's called a pocket coat again it is a free pattern and it's right here. I wanted to have it on for you guys, but it was really too warm. So I will put it on. It is a bottom up cardigan. No buttons. Um, she made it in some bulky yarn, which I did not know until I started looking at the, car the stuff that she used. But it starts down here and then you fold up this nice little pocket. It's really cute. It's a very good construction. I really like it. I wear it everywhere. I made it in Patton's Classic Wool Worsted and the color name is Dark Gray Marl. And this is yarn that I bought at Michael's and for like $4.99 a skein I think it's somewhere around there it's not very expensive um it took four to do this four and a little bit I've used a little bit out of this one so four and a little bit and I love it it fits perfect over like this t-shirt that I have on now I can also put I've um put a hoodie on and put it on over a hoodie to go outside. Um, back in January, we had ice and it was negative degrees here in Illinois. It was, oh, it was cold. It was cold. It was cold. Way too cold for Southern, or not Southern, but I'm more Southern than Northern <laughs> Illinois. Um, but yeah, it was way cold and I would put that... A hoodie on and put this on and I was fairly comfortable the only thing I don't appreciate is that there's no closure to 
to close it. I've been thinking about getting like a shawl pin because I've done I've done this with a with a bobby pin where I just take and I close it just about right here and I kind of weave the bobby pin in so that it stays shut. And then I would take sorry for that. I would take my half and half, which is just a regular half. This is something y'all saw me making at the beginning of the podcast schedule. But I would wrap it around me like this. Oh, my hair's in the way. Y'all are the only ones that get me with my hair down. As soon as this thing is over, hair goes up, gets in my way. But anyways, I would put it on like this, and this was made, this is wool, um, but I don't remember any of the content, but it was from Knit Picks. But yeah, this is the way I would wear it, but it would stay, just so the, the cardigan, cardigan would stay closed. And I stayed nice and warm. I loved this. It's a very good look. But the, the only thing I don't, another thing I don't like is that these pockets go like way back here because the way that you increase to make like a little out pocket here and it folds up. So you like your pocket goes way back here. I lose my chapstick in it. <laughs> First world problems, right? Anyways, so it's way too warm in here for all of that. Let me take this back off. But yeah, I think I'm going to get like a, um, a shawl pin just to, for right there. Because the stitches, I can't, I can't um, fit a button through there. Like on a crochet card, again, you can do it where you can fit a button through the crochet stitches. And that just doesn't work on a knit. So that is one um, in the pocket cardigan. Codigan? I think it's a codigan. Keep saying cardigan, but I think it's a coat again. Um, I made the extra large size, but like I said, um, the yarn that she used was more of a bulky, where this is more of a worsted. So when I went to make it, I didn't realize because when I'm looking at it, it, didn't the pictures didn't look bulky. It looked more like a, a worsted or an Aran. So I'm like, if I make the extra large size. It'll be a little oversized so that I can wear it over the hoodies and all of that. I made it the day I finished it before I blocked it. I put it on and it was it was like skin tight. It was way too tight. I could way too small. It wasn't what I wanted at all. I was very, very upset. It took me 10 days. I finished that on January 5th. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um Oh, and the pattern, I'm sorry, is by Originally Lovely. Um, I used my 5mm needles for the body of the sweater and for the arms. The, um, the little bit of a rolled stockinette collar that's on it. Let me show you that. So you go around and you pick up, at the, after you knit it all, you go around and you pick up for a little um, bit of a collar right here of ribbing and then it just rolls back on itself to kind of like finish it off. Um, I used a four millimeter needle for that. Uh, the gauge swatch, see that's what this is so nice for. The gauge was 13 stitches to eight and 18 rows to make four inches or 10 centimeters. So I made the extra large size. I wanted an oversized sweater to wear over a sweatshirt. Um, so, but it didn't fit that way when I first done it. And I was like, well, I'll just give it to my neighbor. Um, she gets a lot of things that are mess ups and I don't want to take them apart. My nose. I don't know if I got some of that fluffy yarn on there or what. Um, so I'm like, well, let me let me go ahead and I'm going to block it for her before I give it to her. So it's all ready for her to wear. So I blocked it. And when it was dry, I put it on again because I was like, this looks a lot bigger. 
I put it on again and it's like the yarn, I don't know, just opened up and it became stretchier. It wasn't stretchy before, so something was holding it in. Don't ask me, I'm not. I'm not a wool aficionado. I mean, I'm a wool aficionado. I don't know a lot about wool. Um, so, but there was something that I washed out of it that now it like stretches because you saw how nice it looked on without, it wasn't too baggy or anything without a hoodie on underneath it, but it looks just the same way when I have a hoodie on and I put it on. It fits just the same way. It's not like where it looks like I'm put stretching something over something that I shouldn't. It just looks like it fits that way. I don't know, but I love it. And I'm sorry for my neighbor who didn't get it. I might make her one because she'll love it. Um, uh, but I just put in there in the future swatch and math so that I can add a button band. But those are all of my notes for that one. So next in the finished object realm, seems I've been gone for two months, but this one, I started this the day after I finished that one. Uh, the, and it's the Simple Hug Cardi by, sorry, I need to get <coughs> a drink. Okay, the Simple Hug Cardi. And that is a pattern by Cozy Up Knits. They also have a podcast on the YouTubes. I just finished this last night. The body of it has been um, blocked, but not the arms. Because I wanted to make sure... Um, I did the body after I, before I put the arms on just to make sure that there was no going to be no stretchy play thing. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking when I'd done that. But I used 5mm needles for the body. I used 8mm needles for... For the sleeves, I used the five five millimeters for the cuff and nine millimeter needles for the collar that you'll see on it. What I used was some fisherman's wool in this color right here. And the color is oatmeal. Here's the ball band. It took three of these. This is what I have left of the third one. And so, but the color is oatmeal. And then I've really been loving that fuzzy. And I had this in coconut cream. And it's just some browns. It starts with a cream and it goes into a light brown and then a darker brown and then back out. But yeah, I've just really been loving the um, mixing. So that is what I made it out of. And here it is. And I did make modifications to it. This one is big enough to wear a hoodie underneath of it, but it's like that. I don't know. But so here's my modifications. The Comfy Cozy does not come with a pocket. I put a pocket and I put purple as the liner of my pocket. Ha, how cute is that? But can we just admire? So here is where I split for the hat for the sleeves. So at that point, I'm doing this part, the front panel here by itself, the whole back panel, knitting back and forth. This panel here, I'm knitting back and forth. And yet, hold for applause. My stripes on that self striping yarn lined up. Boop ba doo, cause the front looks like back. Woohoo! Woohoo! So excited. About fell off my chair. I was so excited. So, I was so excited about that. But anyways, the modifications. Um, because 
I don't even remember what this is supposed to be made in, but I knew that I wasn't making it in what they wanted, that, that they called for. But in the bottom of the pattern, it, there was a spot so that you made your swatch, which, hi, I swatched. That's not, that's not something I do, but I swatched and I measured my swatch. So, and I've got all of the notes there. So, I'm not using the recommended yarn, so I went to the end of the pattern and followed the math for my own size. I um, measured at the widest point of my bust, or the largest point of my bust, and then I decided how many inches of ease I wanted in the sweater, and it was seven inches, but I think I was never that good in math, and I think my math is off, but it's off in the bigger bigger way, so it's not that big of a deal. So, um, I took, here's a little TMI, 43 inches, <laughs> plus the 7 inches for the, um, the ease, which added up to 50 inches, and then you do, um, says times four equals 200, which is, I cast on 200 stitches. It's a bottom up sweater. So I started at the bottom and the ribbing here, I did not hold any of the fuzzy together because I didn't know I was going to do it yet. And then I did it when I got, you know, after I was thinking this, making two inches of 200 stitch ribbing, I had lots of time to think. And I was like, oh wait, let me add it this. So that's all by itself because when I did the sleeves, I didn't take the fuzzy out, which I should have to make it look the same. And then I should have taken it out when I made this part, but I didn't. So whatever. Isn't that the joy of making what you want? You know, you, you don't have to follow any rules. Okay. So when I was making it, standing back up again, at row 30, I put in... Um, some waste yarn here and to make the pocket and then I went back and I picked those stitches up to knit the ribbing and I picked the stitches up on the inside to make the the pocket on the inside um, so I made my pocket oh I from the from the edge here I knit in 15 stitches and I knit 20 for my pocket. And then I knit around to 35 before the end of the row. I knit 20 and then I picked back up my yarn and I knit the 15. So there is that. Those notes. Um, I knit until I was 15 and a half inches from the cast, not from the cast on. I don't know if it was from the cast on or if it was from the top of the ribbing. I think it was from the top of the ribbing, 15 and a half inches, and that's where I split for my sleeves. I knit the front, the two front panels, um, 11 inches, and then I knit the back panel, 12 inches, um, just so that you know. Where, and the seam still like is round back there, but um, just because of the human body is there's more in the back than there is in the front to make it to the shoulders. So that's what I did. Then I took the eight millimeter needle and I picked up my sleeves. I just, uh, I did a one for one. I put one stitch in every single row. So if it had a row, it got a stitch. Um, I did do decreasing down the sleeve. Um, I decreased every fourth so it's a little it's a little tapered so from here all the way down I every on the fourth row so I would knit three and then on that fourth row is where I would just decrease one at the seam and then keep going all the way down and it was still too many stitches here so at the on the very last row before the ribbing I pulled out my phone and I've got a increase decrease calculator on there and I told it how many stitches I have how many I wanted to decrease by and it gave me a formula for evenly decreasing those stitches so that's what I did and then I did eight rows of ribbing in the five and a, five or five and a half I can't remember millimeter needle 
then I wanted, this just calls for a regular button band, I believe, on the pattern. I kind of stopped following the pattern. I'm sorry. Um, I, it, it's the gist. This is a big, you know, pocket and this collar. I wanted like a, a shawl collar, but I didn't want it down here to be as wide as it is up here at my neck. So what I did was I picked up all of my stitches and I don't know how many I picked up. I didn't count them. I just, again, did pretty much a one for one. Then I started, I was like, you can see here, I didn't take it out. I started doing a reverse, um, not reverse stocking it. What is it called? It was the same as this where I knit every row. So that would have been, you know, my collar. And I just, I didn't, I started doing it and I got like one or two rows in. And I'm like, I don't know. I think that's just too drastic of a change. So I just knit. What I should have done was I should have put the knit stitches on the inside instead of the purl stitches. But whatever, live and learn. And I'm not taking it out. I love it just the same. So that's what I've got here. And I did short rows. So I knit like three or four rows going up. And then I started doing my short rows where I knit all the way around. And then I stopped 10, 10 stitches before the end. I wrapped and turned, went all the way back. 10 stitches before the end, wrapped and turned, went all the way back. 10 stitches before my wrap and turn. And I did that to where until I had five wrap and turns on each side. And it was right around in here somewhere. And I still wanted it to be a little bit wider at the top than it was. So then I decreased it down to five stitches before every wrap and turn. I gotta keep an eye on the time. Okay. Um so then I did five went over, did five stitches before the wrap and turn, five stitches, five stitches, five stitches, and then it was pretty much where I wanted it. And so I then picked up, I went and knit and resolved my stitches. The only problem was, was when I went back and I resolved my pearls, I don't think I did it right. Um, you can kind of see them. If you're a knitter, you, you, you know that that's not what that's supposed to look like. Like my resolves on this side are pretty seamless. Like there's one in here somewhere. There's one right in here. But you, you can't see them, you know, really, unless you're really looking. My resolves on the pearl side, right there, right here, they're fairly obvious. So I don't, I mean, it wasn't enough for me to go back and fix them. I'm like, well, it's good. Um, but I do think I need to work on figuring out how to do that because I really like this the way that this collar is and I and I got the idea from the Andrea Mowry Big Cozy which I know hers is extremely extremely more I also almost just I did this in both just like I did the rest of the sweater I almost just did this in the and that's why I went to that larger nine millimeter needle was so it was a little bit airier um, I should have done it only in the the Karen Latte cake in the, the stripe, but I thought that that would be too dramatic of a change going from where it was kind of softened out in the, in the stripes and all of that to hi, here I am kind of thing. So I don't know, but maybe I should have just done it. I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. It's finished. It's finished. It's done. I'm not taking it apart, but I'm just thinking if I make anything else in the future. So that's it for finished objects. Ooh, it's getting warm. Getting warm. Got to take it off. That's it for my finished objects. So everybody, let's take let's take a water break. Sorry if you could hear any of that, but I was very thirsty. So the first. This is what I've decided. I cast this on 
on January 18th. And I've been working on it. Not as, I wanted to get my, that done, so um, not as much. But one of the first, um, this is probably the first sweater sweater I knit. And this is it. I've, I think I've worn it on the podcast before. This is it. I'll even put it on because I like it. But there's some changes that I'm making to this. I'm really, I like the fit. I like the way that it fits. Um, let backtrack. This is called the Raglan Pullover, also a free pattern from Craft Passion. I will put the pattern in the Ravelry bundle. But it's, I'm re I really like oversizey stuff, which this is not very oversizey. It's also like I don't, I don't, I don't do bracelet length. This, the, I don't wear my, this sweater very often because of this. This drives me nuts. My, I want my, my sleeves. And I think it's a sensory issue. I've always had this where I, I want my stuff. If it's long sleeve, I want it long. I want it to come down like this all of the time. Just by itself. I don't want to have to hold it there. I want it to just be right there. That's it. Or even at my wrist. This one's great. But this one, this this nonsense right here, no bueno. Pam don't like it. So I don't wear this a lot. This is out of some um, Red Heart yarn that I had in royal blue. And then this Aaron Tweed. I don't know the name of this one. But they still make it, so... So, because I do like this, and also, um, I didn't make it, like, long enough. I'm always pulling on it and doing, you know, this. I, I don't know. Even, it just, it just, mm. but I like it. So, I have cast on a new one. I'm also making this out of Red Heart. I have no problem with using acrylic yarns for garments and things they wear wonderful they you know they don't they don't pill um i know some people don't like them and they don't want to wear them because they're plastic or what have you everybody has their own um and i'm really sorry if you don't want to watch or or you can't appreciate anything because it's made out of an acrylic yarn i like it i and i wear it so i've made this one I've not done all the decreases. I thought I was making the same size, but it's a little bit, I think I did go up one size on it. I can't remember how many I cast on, so that'll be fun for making the back pan the front panel, because this one is the back panel. But I am going to, um, holding this up, so right here is my underarm where this would be and I did make it longer. This is quite a bit longer. So I think I'm going to take all the way back to this row right here, this second green row, and make it a beige row, and then knit to here, and go from there. So that, that this green row right there, nope, this third green row, will be that blue row right there. And I think that will be just long enough. That's adding the, the length of this ribbing onto the onto the bottom. So adding about two inches, three inches to the bottom of the sweater should be perfect for lengthwise. And then, so that's what my project for today is. I'm getting hot. <laughs> so that will be what's on the agenda for today. Will be to take out all of this. Um, this was just like an evening's knitting, so it's not that big of a deal. And I'm going to take out this first green row. 
I don't know if you can tell that, but yeah, there's, it's like a sage green on this beige. So I'm going to go down to this row right underneath the green and pick up the stitches. And then I'm going to start my decreases. So I'm taking out that much. And hopefully that'll be work. But that one is the back panel. And so that one, this pattern is a pan, a flat, flat construction. So you knit the, like you start with the back panel and then you make the front panel and then you make the sleeves all in flat. And I'm sure that I've been knitting long enough that I could figure out how to make it a top up. But why? Why not just leave it the way that it is? It's not that hard. Not hard, but yeah, that was my newest. I cast that on on the 18th, and let's see how long, hopefully, I'll have it done by the next podcast. But yeah, so um, I did 19 rows of ribbing, and then after the ribbing, I purled one row. There were some increases in there in the same color as the ribbing, so I don't know if you noticed, but my ribbing is all going to be in that sage color. Thought I'd have some fun with color there. And then, let's see. Then I stock a net for eight rows, and then I did my color work row, which was I knit two at the beginning. I did one, one for one, so one color, one color, one color, back and forth. And I don't know if you noticed, but it gives it this little, like, heart. And I did the last one at this time of year, too, because it was giving me my Valentine's sweater. But the way that the stitches come out, they look like little hearts. Maybe you can see it better on the blue one. Well, I know you can see it better on the blue one. But all the, the little stitches, they look like little hearts. I think that's why I like it. And so then, um, so I did eight rows in between every stripe of hearts, which is just a one for one. And then on the, so I did knit two, one for one all the way across and it worked out where I could knit two at the end. And then on the next stripe, I would knit three of the beige and then do my one for one and I knit three at the end just so that they were offset just a, a little bit and it's hard to see it in there but they are so that's what I did there that's all the notes I have kept on that one so far I'm using um I don't know if I said it four millimeter was for the ribbing and five millimeter was for the body so, I'm trying, I, I made notes on what I was going to talk about today. Then I've got, so I was supposed to do this last week, and the name of the podcast was going to be Three Frogs, Two Whips, and a Finished Object, but I've got lots of finished objects. I mean, I've got, I've got two. I've got two finished objects, so, and only one whip. So... But I do have two frocks. And there's ones you've, they're ones you've seen. So one of them, I've already taken the needles out of it. And I just haven't done anything with it. And it is going to, if that's my, that was my second boxy. I like oversize. But looking at this was way too oversized. This is like, there's, there's, there's two oversized of me in this. So this is definitely getting pulled out. It is Knit Picks yarn. And this stuff right here. I made my Vesper out of it, which that's a whole nother saga. Which I don't think I showed you guys my Vesper. I might have to get it. I made my Vesper out of these two whiter ones with um, the Karen Latte Cakes in, in this color. It's like cream. Yep, cream. And so I took and I had these left over from the white, and that's what I was making here. 
I am going to make something out of it, but I don't, I don't know what yet. It is wool. Let me read what it is. But um, it's knit picks. Well, it's knit picks, and you can't get it anymore. So, but it's in the Dune colorway. It's superwash merino worsted weight. So it's worsted weight wool. And I've got some in blue. So that I'm going to take and get out. Let me. My Vesper is right over there. Let me go grab it. Let me see if I can do this without knocking over cords. All right, so this itself was a whole saga. This took way too long to make, and I'm not, I'm still not happy with it. I did wear it Christmas Day, but I'm still not happy. I don't know. We're back to this situation for one. Um, I finally got this part to fit the way that I wanted, um, but we're back to the sleeves. I don't know if I can just add, pick up and start doing the sleeves some more, but then, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, there's the Vesper. I might, I might do that with the sleeves, just the sleeves. Ugh. If I go, if I take and I do, because I would have to do the stripes again. This would be my third time doing these sleeves, by the way. I would have to do this row in that color, and then another white row. So that would add on that much to the sleeve, and then... So, maybe, I, that, I, I'm getting ready to talk myself into it. This was going to be a frog. I was going to frog it and be done with it, but, but, oh, I'm getting, my earbud just fell out. But, I think, I think. I just talked myself into it. So, tune in here to this channel to see what happens. Because I do, I do love it. I do love it. So there's that. So I was getting ready to have three whips, but um, I think I've talked about everything. The only thing was I was talking earlier about my goals this is, I'm, I'm so out of practice. I can't believe I've been so squirrel and all over the place in this thing. Um, my 2024 goals were to keep better track of notes on all of my projects. Um, possibly use Ravelry better. I think I really want to learn cabling. I love... I've, and I've seen so many of them that I'm just falling in love with. A good all-over cabled sweater. Kuta Vakika, um, she's got one. Um, um, petite Knits, she has one that's like an all-over texture with knits and or with cables and uh, bobbles. And I'm just like, I'm all here for it. Um, I'm pretty sure Laura Penrose has one that I have liked that I, I'm, I've got in my, my mind and my favorites that I'm wanting to make. So, tune in. There's lots of tuning in. Stay tuned to this channel because you never know what I'm going to do. This could all be taken apart for next week. Who knows? Who knows the madness that goes on in Pam's head? But anyways... Um, I think that I want, I want, I want to learn the, to do cabling this year. 
something else that is really, it's a scary, scary thing. I want to make a steaked sweater. So in steaking, what you're doing is you're making a sweater in the round like this one, but in the middle, you have put in waist stitches, okay? And then you cut. I don't know if you noticed my eyes. <laughs> you cut your knitting. So like a regular project, you know, like those take me two weeks to make a cardigan. I've been making this, this uh, the, the raglan pullover for, you know, two weeks. And that one's not getting as much love, but whatever. But it makes, it takes at least two weeks. Some people can make it faster. But for me, it takes me two weeks to make a sweater. And then to cut the yarn. So that there's a big hole here in the center. It's just terrifying. 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 So I want to learn how to do it this year. <laughs> um, there are so many projects. There's a lot like um, there are, there's these, they're Norwegian, I want to say, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish. They're jackets and they're called kuftas. And they're like all over color work. Um, and they're just, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I want one so bad. But they're almost all steeped because they're color work. And color work is easier to do in the round as it is flat working back and forth. So then you've got the stitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So I want to learn cabling and I want to learn color work. And I want you guys to hold me accountable. If you don't see it at one of them soon, be like in the comments. Pam, you told us you wanted to learn this. Where's it at? Okay, I need it. I need it. I need the accountability. So, I think that's all I've got as far as my knitting goes. Again, I want to apologize um, for being gone for two months. I am going to only try to do this every two weeks. So instead of weekly, that was, that was too much. Um, I love doing this and I love showing you guys everything that I've been making, but it does take away from my knitting time. And I don't have a lot of that to begin with. Um, I am working a new schedule at work. So I work eight o'clock at night till 6.30 in the morning. So then I come home and I'm up for a couple of hours yeah, one of those hours, Don hasn't left for work yet. He doesn't leave to work till like 7.30. So I'm with Don working in the mornings. And then I need to go to bed. And I get up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm making dinner. And I'm being able to cook for my family. Which is something that I haven't done in a couple of years. Because of my schedule. Um, so, yeah. It, I've, I've, I've had a lot of family time this the past two months. It's been really nice. And I really like it. But that's also some of my knitting time. And if I'm taking away from my knitting time to do this, sometimes this just goes, and I'm like, I don't care. But I do care. But I just don't want to take away from my knitting time. I want my knitting projects to be done. But anyways, with that being said, it's getting to that time where we're going to wind it up. We're going to do our Bible time. And then we'll do our goodbye. All right? Okay, so put the eyes on today. So during the uh, disastrous Vlogvember, I decided that I was going to go through this book that I've got, Then Sings My Soul. And in there it's got um, hymns. It's 300 of the world's greatest hymns, plus their stories. So on one side it has the hymn, and on the other side it has the story behind the hymn. So I was reading, I did, a, um, I think I did two of them. But we're going to continue with that. So when I looked at a hymn for today, the Bible verse that went along with the hymn was Psalm 
3419. So we're going to read that. We're going to read it in our New Living Touchpoint Bible. And in there it says, The righteous face many troubles, but the Lord rescues them from each and every one. And then in our uh, King James Version Rainbow Study Bible, verse thir chapter 34 of Psalm, verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. So now, our hymn for the week is, It is Well with My Soul. Now, this has a little bit of a story for me. Back, um, my grandson will be 10 this year. Back when he was 2, he was diagnosed with leukemia, which is terrifying for your, not, not just my 2-year-old grandson, but for my daughter. That's her 2-year-old baby. <laughs> and I'm going to get crying. My makeup's going to run. Um, and... It, that, it was hard. It was hard. And this song, and there's one with Casting Crowns that they sing this, you know, It Is Well With My Soul. And that one was another one that, you know, whatever the Lord has for us, it is well with my soul. Would I have been happy if the Lord would have taken my grandson? No. No, I would not have. Um... But I would have rejoiced in the fact that he was with the Lord, that he was with my son who is in heaven um, today. He just had his uh, 25th birthday in heaven. So, um, but it, I would have held, fell, held firm to my faith in God. So let's read about the, uh, the, the author of the, of the hymn. When the Great Chicago Fire consumed the Windy City in 1871, Horatio G. Spafford, an attorney heavily invested in real estate, lost a fortune. What about, about that time, his only son, age four, succumbed to scarlet fever. Horatio drowned his grief and work, pouring himself into rebuilding the city and assisting the 100,000 who had been left homeless. In November of 1873, he decided to take his wife and daughters to Europe. Horatio was close to D.L. Moody and Ira Sankey, and he wanted to visit their evangelic meetings in England, then enjoy a vacation. When an urgent matter detained Horatio in New York, he decided to send his wife, Anna, and their four daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie on ahead as he saw them settled into a cabin aboard the luxurious French liner, oh, I'm going to butcher this, Vu de Hair, an unease filled his mind, and he moved them to a room closer to the bow of the ship. Then he said goodbye, promising to join them soon. During the small hours of November 22, 1873, as the ship glided over smooth seas, the, pa the passengers were jolted from their bunks. The ship had collided with an iron sailing vessel, and water poured in like Niagara. The ship tilted dangerously. Screams, prayers, and oaths merged into the, a nightmare of unmeasured terror. Passengers clung to posts, tumbled through darkness, and were swept away by powerful currents of icy ocean. Loved ones fell from each other's grasp and disappeared into foaming blackness. Within two hours, the mighty ship vanished beneath the waters. The 226 fatalities included Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie. Mrs. Spafford was found nearly unconscious, clinging to a piece of wreckage. When the 47 survivors landed on Carford, Wales, she cabled her husband, saved alone. 
Horatio immediately booked passage to join his wife en route on a cold December night. The captain called him aside and said, I believe we are now passing over the place where the ship went down. Spafford went to his cat cable. I'm sorry, Spafford went to his cabin, but found it hard to sleep. He said to himself, it is well, the will of God be done. He later wrote his famous hymn based on those words, the melody for it is well, titled Vildur <laughs> was written by Philip Bliss, who was himself soon to perish along with his wife in a terrible train wreck in Ohio. So, if you've never heard the words, the first verse of It Is Well With My Soul reads, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but in whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Verse 3, O oh Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. So, with that being said, and tears in my eyes, <laughs> I do declare. Woo! We're going to go ahead and do our prayer. Father, thank you for the wonderful day that you've given us and the time that I've been able to come back and get in front of the camera. Please keep me from my pity party that I've been having and know that if just one person, two people are watching, that that's more than enough for me. Please be with each and every one of the souls that do watch this all the way to the very end and that they come to know you as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that they can, they too can say that no matter what comes their way, that it is well with their soul. In your precious son's name, amen. And until next time, remember, this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.